The first photo came from Time magazine. It shows a 29-year-old Trudeau dressed as Aladdin at an Arabian Nights-themed party in 2001. The Liberal leader admitted there was another photo of him in blackface at a high school talent show. And another video of Trudeau dressed in blackface was obtained by Global News. A spokesperson for the Liberal Party says it is from the early 1990s. We are waiting for more reaction from Trudeau himself. He is expected to speak in about half an hour. For more on the history and the significance of blackface, I want to bring in Cheryl Thompson. She is a professor at Ryerson University, and she joins us from Toronto. So, Cheryl, what was your reaction when you first saw the photos of Trudeau wearing black and brown face? Uh, I just wasn't surprised. Hmm. I really wasn't. Uh, I think I was just a bit more disappointed just based on the way that he's always presented himself. Um, but I wasn't shocked. Why? Why were you not surprised? Um, because in my own lifetime, I've been in places where I've seen people, <laughs> white men, show up in blackface. Like, that has happened to me in my own personal life. And Justin Trudeau is just a few years older than me. So if that happened in my own experience, then it would only make sense that he either knows someone or he might have done it himself, right? So it just, I think it's more shocking to the public than it is to people who have grown up mm -hmm. in the Canada that I've grown up in, seeing these things happen all the time. Would you describe these moments as people that you didn't expect would show up that way, that maybe were progressive open-minded people like could you can you give us some context to when you when you ha when you had these experiences right like actually I remember there was a teacher in high school um, who showed up in blackface for Halloween dressed as a Jamaican with fake dreadlocks and his whole skin was in like a tar a black tar color this was a nice person we all liked this teacher and he was really nice to everyone. And I think he probably thought that he was being cool, like he was trying to really relate to us. Mm. So even at that age, I understood that some people lack racial knowledge. They don't necessarily have the intention in their heart to harm you. They just don't have any racial knowledge of who you are and what your life experience is like. You've been um, a longtime supporter, right, of Trudeau? What have these revelations done to your trust in him as a leader or your, your feelings about him? Honestly, it's tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be in that booth on the 21st, like shaking. I really don't know. I, it, it's a really tough decision because for me, it's not about finding, you know, it's not about voting for someone who's perfect. Like none of these politicians are perfect. They all have a past. But authenticity does matter. And he, he's just presented himself as this like champion of diversity and difference. And the whole time in his past, and he fully acknowledged this and admits it, he's done these things that have been very, that are actually very hurtful to the same groups that he claims now to be supporting. You know, it's, it's just, it, it, it leaves a very bad taste in your mouth. Tell us about the history of blackface in Canada and, and, and its symbolism and why it's hurtful. Right. So I think people often think, well, this is an American thing that is very contemporary, but mm -hmm. it actually isn't. So the origins of blackface um, are in the U.S., yes, in the 1830s. Like, that's really the, the beginning of it. But the earliest traces of blackface in Canada go back to the 1840s. And at that time, it would have been like traveling circuses would have had like a minstrel character. But by the time you get into the 1850s and onward, there are locally raised born Canadians who are performing blackface and then joining the theater circuit of North America. So by the 1850s, this is a Canadian thing. I, I almost describe it as Hollywood. Today in Hollywood, there are Canadian actors who are part of the American Hollywood machine. But we acknowledge that they're Canadian, right? And we sort of acknowledge this as Canadian um, Canadians expanding in, the, in, in Hollywood. It's the same idea in the 19th century. We have Canadian born actors who then go to the U.S. and become blackface performers and are traveling throughout Ontario, Quebec, and the country in the 1870s, 80s, and 90s. And then as we get into the 20th century, it's a localized thing that is happening everywhere, at summer camps, at church groups, um, at corporate parties, um, at public parks. It literally is in the open space and it's kind of everywhere. But by the time we get into the 60s, obviously there's a shift, civil rights, multiculturalism, all of these things. Blackface didn't go away. It just went into the private homes 
of people and it went into private spaces. We're only hearing about it now is because social media, right? People post a picture on Facebook or Instagram and then it catches international attention. So this is not something that is new. It's just with the internet and the digital media, we're just able to see it. And whereas before, you know, we didn't have any access to it unless we actually went to the show. And so uh, we are expecting to hear from uh, Justin Trudeau in about half an hour. We're also expecting expecting to see him in just about a minute or two as he is uh, meeting and greeting people in Winnipeg. Uh, we heard him apologize last night. I want to get you to react to his apology last night. But since last night, and then he mentioned there was one uh, other incident in high school, uh, and then it's come to light that there's another photo from the um, yearbook we'll call instance, and then there's a video uh, that Global News obtained. So that's three or four, depending on how you're counting it all. What more do you need to hear from Justin Trudeau on this? You know, first of all, I'm tired of apologies. Like, mm -hmm. how much? How many times can you apologize? Like, at a certain point, it doesn't even mean anything. Like, he needs to, he needs to account for his behavior and atone. Like, you need to explain yourself. The first image that was released by Time Magazine, he was 29 years old. Can we go back and maybe just talk about 29-year-old Justin Trudeau? You know, with some honesty here, I think would go a long way and maybe he could just admit, I was living in a world where I didn't know anyone who was not white and I actually thought this was okay, right? Just, but I've changed. To me, it's all about the transformation. It's not about getting stuck. It's when a person doesn't acknowledge that maybe they have changed. Fine, say that. So then we can go on the journey with you. But when you just want to keep apologizing and say, oh, I didn't know any better. Well, 29 years old, there's 29-year-olds who are doing a lot more than that, and they know better, <laughs> right? There's 29-year-olds who are working. Mm -hmm. They're in the military. Mm -hmm. They're doing a lot of things. So I don't know why we need to excuse the behavior of a 29-year-old. It's just not... Mm -hmm. In no world should we be doing that, right? So all he has to do is really atone. Cheryl, there's one uh, last question I want to ask you, and that is getting back to what you said about how he presented himself as this champion of diversity, and then we see these photos. We heard from uh, a liberal candidate uh, from Quebec who happens to be black. We heard from Harjit Sajjan, who, who basically, and I'm su summarizing, but they said, look, uh, it was disappointing, it was wrong, but let's, let's look at the measure of the man and what he has done in terms of policy. What do you make of that argument? Yes. I do hear that argument, but... Um, it's just not enough for me. It's like saying, it's like if, you know, if you're in a family and you find out that your father extramarital affair with someone, um, are you going to say, well, he was still a good dad? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you might not look at it that way. You're going to say, dad, explain what happened. Why did you do this? Right? So yes, he's still a good politician in my hand, in my opinion. You know, I have always voted liberal mm -hmm. in the federal election as long as I can remember. So for me, it's about, um, authenticity. Like I said, I want to know that when this person is making those speeches about diversity and caring about us, that he's actually genuine. Mm -hmm. And because of this, because of these images, I feel like I'm always going to question his sincerity. So he he has to work on that. That is, you know, and it doesn't mean that he can't win people over. We've seen a lot of um, people over the last 50 years have really bad mistakes and they've overcome them, right? So um, that's where I'm coming from. But I'm not going to be so quick to to just forgive and forget because he has to do something. He has to prove it.